through. You get that. Oh! 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 Wow! Saint oh, Hill gets it Finished done. Finished by Jamal Hill. Jamal Hill's story is both inspiring and peculiar. He became UFC champion after twists of fate worthy of a movie, then had to abdicate the light heavyweight throne due to an injury, and now finds himself on the precipice of the unlikeliest of main events at a historic UFC 300. We finally got the answer for who will be headlining UFC 300, and it will be yours truly versus Alex Pereira. At six foot four, and boasting a 79-inch reach, he'll use his range as his main attribute for offense and defense. He fights primarily as a southpaw and utilizes the typical weapons you would expect. Strong left kicks alternating between head and body, a sharp shooting left straight, a bludgeoning right check hook, and piercing knees when opponents get up close. Hill excelled at basketball in high school and college, but shifted his attention to combat sports after he was bit by the MMA bug by watching the mesmerizing performance of Anderson Silva against Forrest Griffin. I watched the Anderson Silva, Anderson Silva versus Forrest Griffin fight. Mm. And like seeing that was like crazy. I'm like, damn, can I fight like that? Damn, what happened if I run into a motherfucker like that? I should probably become a motherfucker like that I mean, just in case <laughs> just, to, just, to, just to be safe he quickly started training in jujitsu and then MMA employing his athletic talents and youthful brashness to improve rapidly after a short amateur career <laughs> he'll cash his first professional paycheck in 2017 at a local promotion called knockout promotions he scored five wins in two years in his hometown before he gunned for the big league in 2019 when he was picked to participate in Dana White's Contender Series. Jamal faced Alexander Popik and delivered a performance impressive enough for the UFC brass to award him a contract. For two rounds, Jamal managed to keep Popik on the end of his punches and punished him both to the head and body until late in the second. Or end it. Yeah, you... Go. Facing each other, kicking each other, punching each other. <laughs> Hill shook one off. Out for that left hook. Another left cross and up top with a kick from Hill. Hill intensified the onslaught and punched his ticket into the world's premier MMA organization. The combination is Hill blitzes full. Left cross. Steps in with another knee and an uppercut. Ooh, continues to go to the body, and that one hurt Popic. See Popic guarding his midsection. Good pressure by Hill. Oh, slip. Nice knee. Another knee to the body several times. Close to being done in this one. Two more knees to the body. hold of anything right now another knee to the body so ground and pound now as Poppet covers up and Jamal Hill he was able to add more and more you started seeing him add the right hook you started seeing him add more knees man what a fight an incredible fight you said coming into this fight you were excited to be able to throw hands with someone who was going to trade with you how do you feel about your performance tonight uh, I feel like I did well enough, you know, uh, I'm always, I'm very hard critic on myself. So, you know, I'm going to get right back to the gym and I'm going to get better, you know, and keep growing. You know, this is a, uh, it's a long journey. Uh, I feel like I should have been here uh, a long time ago, you know, but I'm here now. I'm ready to get it going. Oh, you don't know how bad I am ready to get it going. Jamal made his official UFC debut in January 2020 against Serbian powerhouse Darko Stozic, who had double the amount of pro fights at the time. The limited experience did not seem to matter even a tiny bit. Hill walked out like a seasoned pro and performed as one. Hill employed the classic rangy southpaw tactics and circled to the outside of Stozic hammering him with roundhouse kicks and long left straights to the body and head. Despite taking some hard punches and showing some glaring gaps in his ground game, 
Jamal was rightfully awarded the unanimous decision win. Oh, wow. Again, that left hook. Another big left from Darko. Oh. And Darko slowed down. Yeah, you gotta think for Darko. He's eating up sticks now. Guy like you at middleweight, right? That will the fly now. Yeah. Picking on, you know, improvements that he can make. He's clearly winning the fight. Going to his coaches, going to the body. It's your first time. That's big stuff. No, he has fun now. No recollection of the fight because I was so. He's putting on a clinic. There's not much lull in the action. He gets to throw something. He is doing that. And it's the variety that he's throwing. He's throwing a lot. Darko fought to the very end. And still undefeated, Jamal Sweet Dreams Hill. Hill's second fight in the UFC was against Clidson Abreu. The fight lasted only two minutes, and it was the performance Hill had hoped for. He was taken down six times. Oh, oh come on, Hill, but look at that. Right, right oh, away. Big knee. A cornerstone of his style is his left straight from southpaw, which he throws by taking a small step to the outside and leaning his whole body into it. This extends Hill's already impressive reach and allows him to land it from a range his opponents aren't prepared for. Abreu survived the beautiful combo and fought for another two minutes, but a brutal knee to the body put an exclamation mark on the fight. Focus on how to get a man oh, through the Proving people wrong. Look at I'm, that. I'm, I'm a fuck. I'm coming. Get. I'm coming. I'm here. Unfortunately for Jamal, the fight was overturned into a no contest because he tested positive for marijuana. It's obviously, you look sensational getting the win, but unfortunately, it was overturned due to that. You know, positive tests of weed. As someone who's been through that whole scenario, how do you feel about them? Them weed laws and how they can potentially change them moving forward. I think it's fucking stupid. I'm not, I'm not the person you want to ask that. I think it's dumb as hell. I think everything that I've had to deal with as a result of that is dumb as fuck. And um, yeah, I didn't think they need to find focus energy on things that actually matter and not goofy shit like that. After the unnecessary suspension, Hill was back in action in December 2020 against his first true test. Former title challenger and always dangerous Ovin St. Pru. Despite the equal footing of his opponent, Hill managed to gauge the range better and hit St. Pru to the head and body with a measured approach. The body punches opened up the target upstairs, and as St. Pru was moving along the fence with his chin straight up, Hill laid him up and finished the job with a barrage of rapid punches. Most when OSP goes into his regular stand of Hill. Both guys appear to land hard to the body there. He'll land it on north of Peru early in round one. Please, nice kick. OSP, so he's okay with just to stay on the outside, use his kick. So got to avoid that, punch. though. Really moving his head a lot. Oh. And this is what you know Hill wants. He's got to stop. Oh. He's got to hurt the fence. Oh, nice big right hand. From Hill. As well. Guys, I think St. Pru can win this fight if, he, if he's southpaw. Every time he goes right-handed, he's taking damage. Oh. Shots coming. Oh. This is his friend. Huge right, right hand there. there. I think he's, he's out of here right now. Up. He's going to get stopped. He's done. Oh, wow. It's done. by Jamal Hill. Jamal, sweet dreams, Hill. Jamal always wears an aura of positivity, but against Paul Craig, there was some animosity between the two. Fighting emotionally is not something you are usually advised to do, and this fight was yet another proof. Jamal decided to play along with the grappling wizard Craig and remained in his guard instead of attempting to get back to his feet. And the consequences were almost immediate. Kind of stepped, oh, he's in trouble. He's in trouble. That right arm's in a real bad situation. Oh, I think he's all right. I think he's all right. No, he's got that arm. And he's going to go. Yeah, he's got the arm. He's got the arm. 
it. He's got it. Maybe his arm's broken. At this location? Or? Yeah, that's definitely broken. It's this oh, location. Oh, he's flopping around. And that is crazy. Al Gaidi is going to stop the play. Just stop. Just stop. That's already done. That's locked in. It's it's gone right there. It's broken. It's dislocated. I don't want to have to land these elbows. And gentlemen, referee Al Gaidi is called a stop to this contest. Yeah, Bo. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Come on! Yes, boy. Hey. Yeah. 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 Hell yeah, man. After rehabilitating his arm and readjusting his mindset, Hill was back in action in December of 2021 against Jimmy Crute, who previously submitted Paul Craig. There were no hiccups this time. Less than 30 seconds into the fight, Hill sent the Australian to the canvas with a beautiful step-off right hook. Supposed to work with the legs straight up. Oh! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Seconds later, he landed the same strike, this time intercepting a crude overhand. So if I'm Jimmy Crude, you get the oh! You got to do it! Do it! Jamal Hill! Sweet dreams! Jamal! Sweet dreams! Yeah! How are you feeling up there right now? I'm feeling pretty good. It's good to be back in the win column, especially after what happened last fight, and to do it this way against a guy like Jimmy Crew, who is highly talented. Right, and the mistakes you made last time. How, how was the feel today? What, how much different did it feel stepping into the cage? Um, man, we in Sweet Dream Stadium. Man, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Like, just being out here, fighting in here, you know, it just feels routine now. Yeah. Do you feel like if there were any, you know, doubters or critics who said, oh, this guy wasn't the guy we thought he was, do you think you proved that tonight that, that you are? I don't care. I don't care. You know, you keep doubting, keep hating, doing whatever it is you're doing. I'm going to keep doing me. It was one round sweet dreams yet again in his first main event slate against fellow knockout artist Johnny Walker. For the first time, Jamal had an opponent towering over him. But this didn't prevent him from delivering one of the best knockouts of 2022. Good for both of these guys. Spinning attack. moving like this you got to dodge the crazy punch oh, oh my god gosh. that's Jamal it Hill laid him out putting another opponent to Whoa. sleep a picture perfect right cross counter to a jab and walker was dramatically falling another right alongside the fence and he was out in a violent nap after the two highlight real ko's an inevitable inclusion in the light heavyweight top 10 and a second main event followed this time against Tiago Santos. After an uneventful first round, the action quickly picked up. Midway through the second, the pair was swinging recklessly and both had their success, but it was Hill's right hooks that found the mark while Santos was visibly tiring. It lands for Santos, oh. now swinging. Oh, oh, just missed. Head kick and a big hook from Hill. Swinging out of his shoes with some of these. Uh, every time they engage, they just away. We'll see a third round. In the third, Santos took the reasonable approach and resorted to wrestling with Hill, which successfully won him the round, but also depleted his gas tank, and he was outworked in the wild exchanges in the fourth. Body answered by a knee from Hill. One more takedown attempt, successful for Santos. Hill's favorite combo started the final sequence, during which Sweet Dreams also demonstrated a granite chin. Santos had nothing left in him to oppose the incoming onslaught. Knee, big knee up top. Sweet Dreams is starting to feel it. Oh, big shots from Look Santos. I mean, how Hill has the most rounds. Put some power and put yes. an exclamation Go point on the Knights. That's That'll it. do it! Yeah. 
Jamal. Sweet dreams. Yeah. I'm happy with the win, but uh, I'm not happy with my performance. Um, I need to get back to the drawing board and do a much, much better job. And um, yeah, and that's what I'm gonna do. That's everybody, because every single fight you hear the same thing. You keep hearing the same thing every fight. My experience, experience, my experience. What experience? You ain't never fought nobody like me. Just give me, I'm hungry. I want gold. The lion is hungry for gold. Former, present or former. While Jamal's three straight performances were impressive, and he was clearly getting into the title picture, people were predicting a more incremental rise to the top. But nobody was expecting the turn of events that happened. Newly crowned champion Yuri Prohaska had to rematch Glover Teixeira at UFC 282, but the Czech fighter vacated the title due to a severe shoulder injury. The main event of UFC 282 is off after Yuri Prohaska suffered what UFC doctors are calling the worst shoulder injury they've ever seen. Glover turned down short notice replacement Magomed Ankalaev, and the UFC decided to promote the scheduled fight between Ankalaev and Jan in a five round title fight. An utterly dull fight ended in a draw, and the title remained up for grabs, resulting in a quick decision by Dana White to schedule the seventh ranked Jamal Hill and Glover Teixeira to fight for the belt. All picks were against Hill, and people expected Glover to end his career as a two-time champion. But Jamal had other plans. The game plans were evident from the first second. The American wanted to use his long range and precision strikes to win, while the Brazilian had to rely on his chain wrestling and get in close, where he would clearly have the upper hand. But from the first bell, it became clear Hill added a new element to surprise the former champ. He was often switching to orthodox to take away Glover's favorite technique, the single leg takedown. Hill's strategy from both stances was the same, long leading rear straights, circling to the outside of Glover, crisp boxing combos, and avoiding the takedown at all costs. Very important, especially Jeffy and Lario spending three weeks with Jamal Hill and but he's taking a lot of the big grunt off. The damage started piling up on Glover in the second. Hill kept his distance, changing levels with front and roundhouse kicks, and seemingly couldn't miss Teixeira's head with punches. He tries to return with, oh, oh man! That one wobbled Teixeira, now another head kick! Sure, but they rattled him. Oh, beautiful knee there by Hill. How about the championship yeah. medal of Teixeira? Discrepancy for both athletes. Just load up. Ooh. Down the stretch of round two. The remainder of the fight was all Hill. He bloodied and battered Teixeira in front of his home crowd. Goes down. Jamal Hill is a finisher when he's on top, guys. He's gonna put all his weight in these shots. Under three minutes to go, round three. So he goes left oh, and right. That that was good. Go back to the head kick. Well, Hill is tired as well here. Yeah, he's starting to get Ooh, tired. Body kick. Over to Shara. Turn jabs. Jamal's going back to it. There it is. Good comment to set up a knee, and he does. Oh, left. Just got to start working his jab here. Oh, there's the head kick, and it landed. Oh! oh. It was a nice knee. Oh! Oh! Boy, Jamal Hill is putting it on him. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Matches up with everybody else, because right now he is winning this fight. Oh, this could do it. Yeah, oh, a big right hand. Oh, look for the knee. Oh, good counter left there from Hill. The beating Jamal Hill is putting on Glover to, oh, to the body. It's 
Glover to Shara just showing you why he is who he is and why he's in this. Oh, oh huge mode. Oh, and now an uppercut. Happen? Did. Does not seem like there's a Hail Mary. Nice job again. Oh! Tashara has him mounted. Oh, he sneaks out the back. And he gets a takedown. Wow. Fair. There will be no draw tonight. There it is, a record-breaking performance statistically for Jamal Sweet Dreams Hill. The 43-year-old Tashara heard the final bell, but there was no doubt who the new light heavyweight champion was. Jamal! Sweet Dreams Hill! And just like Hill received the opportunity to battle for the title courtesy of Prohaska's injury, a few months later, Jamal ruptured his Achilles tendon. As you know, recently I've I tore I tore my Achilles. It was a it was a complete rupture. It's a pretty serious injury. It's one that I'm uh, going to take rehab. It uh, requires surgery, things like that. So you know, I just wanted to come back now and fill y'all in on on what's been happening and what's and what's going on. And opted to follow the example of the check and vacated the title, so the division could go on. His title reign ended as unexpectedly as it began. But now, Hill finds himself once again on the tip of the wave. He was perhaps deep down in the line of people you would think would headline the landmark event UFC 300. But the fact is, he is scheduled to share the historic spot with a man with an even shorter route to the title than him, Alex Pereira.